Hi, everybody, and welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Flynn, and I'm very excited to be joined by Bill Hope. Hey, Bill, how you doing, mate? Good, good. How you doing, Flynn? I'm very, very well, thank you. Last time we checked in with you, it was freezing cold, and you're in the Blue Mountains. How are you doing today? Doing very well. I've had the heating on for about an hour, so things are feeling temperate, feeling good. Right. That's good. That's better than me. Um, so just before our stream, my heater um, exploded. Well, it, it blew the oh. power. It blew the power cord. <laughs> so. Oh dear. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm just, glad you're uh, not on fire. Yeah, just a small fire. Um, but yeah, no. You know, the show goes on, as they say. Um, so here we are. Yeah. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll deal with that later. Um, it's wonderful to see you all in chat. Um, let me just bring everybody up. Actually, while I'm doing that, why don't you give us a bit of an idea of what we're going to do today? Because this is our third, I think, um, interactive kind of uh, drawing, interactive illustration kind of session. And we've done everything is yeah, live. Yeah. And today we're on all aboard. So maybe you all could aboard. help us understand that one. Sure, sure. So um, basically, we've been doing these drawing hanging out sessions. Um, where people are putting the suggestions in the comments and I'll be drawing whatever you ask me to draw. Um, we've had some fantastic suggestions um, on the past couple of streams that we've done. So uh, we did one all about monsters. So I was drawing all kinds of monsters. And then we had one um, which was, I'm totally blanking on what the last one was. Oh, everything is alive. So everything we had objects alive. that were coming, coming to life, which was, which was fantastic. There were some amazing suggestions coming through there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the one that we're doing today, I've called All Aboard. And basically, um, I've got a mode of transport. We've got a boat, and basically, we're going to fill it up with characters. So I'm hoping for some exciting uh, nautical characters to fill up this boat with. Um, and I thought this would be a good opportunity to draw some people because uh, we've been doing mostly monsters and coffee cups so far. So we could maybe do <laughs> some some human beings this time. But I mean, it's the ocean, so there could be sharks, kraken, whatever. So keen to see what people come up with. Um, throw me any suggestions you like, and we'll get through as many as we can in the next hour and a half. Awesome, awesome. And I think um, this time around, you had some suggestions from Instagram or what to start with. And so you had something to start uh, yes. with this time. Um, I'm forgetting the name of uh, who got in contact, but someone said they would like a Sailor Donut. So uh, um, that's the place that we're going to start. And um, yeah, uh, I, I, will, I will get started sketching. Getting um, in. All right, so I'm just working in Photoshop today um, using uh, my trusty inky brush. Um, and if anyone has any questions about what I'm drawing or how I'm drawing or anything like that, um, feel free to check in the questions in the chat and I'll try and sort of uh, take them as they come. Uh, awesome. So we've got our, our first character is going to be a nautical um, donut. So we've got our initial donut shape. And then um, I think uh, because it's at the front of, oh, I should, I should show you, we've got a sort of Grecian battleship here that I'm, that I'm working on. Uh, so it's got a nice happy face at the end, nice curly tail. And hopefully we can just keep extending this, this battleship out until we've got a, um, a really significant crew on top of this ship. Um, so let's go with a sort of uh, Captain Donut uh, character here. Captain so Donut. We've got Captain Donut. Hardened by the sea, uh, everyone's just going to have to imagine there's an eye patch over that side of the donut. But uh, um, let's get a bit of icing going on a donut character. And just a quick shout out to uh, Hey Johanna, Hey D, great for you to join us. Um, and I think yes. Tim as well. Tim's in the house. What's up, Tim? How are you doing? Good to see you, hey in everyone. There. Thanks for thanks for tuning in again. Uh, always keen to know what people are up to. Um, at uh, this time of the morning, if you're in Australia or New Zealand, mm. um, uh, or if you guys are working or uh, not working, avoiding work, um, keen to hear what you're doing this morning. That sounds good. What about you? Are you um, are you very busy at the moment? Are you chilling out doing your own projects? What's your in in the roller coaster of life as a freelance illustrator? <laughs> at what at what at what stage of the ride are you on at the moment? Um, I'm actually at the rare place where I have just enough work to keep me busy right now, but I'm not in a complete panic. So I've got some storyboards to do today, but not too many. I've got a book project I'm working on, but um, I'm, I'm waiting on feedback. So I'm sort of just sort of treading water with that one. So I'm actually in a, in a really sort of relaxed workplace right now, which is rare. I'm usually sort of boom mm. or bust. So I'm feeling good this morning about the work situation. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's the that's usually the usually the thing is that it's um you too far one way or too far the other way, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. All right, so I've got a donut character coming together. Get a couple more sprinkles going on this guy. Um, I was going to go full out with the sort of eye patch and parrot, but you know what? I, I fear I've got a good feeling that's all going to come through eventually. So mm-hmm. not too stressed at this point. True. Mm-hmm. Okay, feeling good. Donut <laughs> sailor number one. Tim's taking oh, care of the puns, which is I great. Think. So he said, uh, speaking of ships, do you know every pirate's favorite letter of the alphabet? Uh, I'm guessing it's R. R. <laughs> well done. It's actually C. Um, that's great. Oh, yeah. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tim. You're all over it. It's so good. Um, right. Yeah, so also, um, if you are uh, watching on YouTube or anywhere else, jump over to behance.net slash live if you want to jump into to the chat. That's the chat we're using today. Um, so, so, yeah, jump on in. All aboard. Get on the boat. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm just working in a um, uh, uh, a duck representing uh, Flynn, you. taking care of the controls uh, oh, this awesome. morning. Just a little so fire in little... the background um, to make it realistic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you got your little microphone and your computer, whole setup ready to go. I like it. Um, and a small fire. <laughs> All right. Um, might just fill in the layer underneath. So you've got a you've got a full week of um, uh, Australian content this week, Flynn. Um, what's what's some of the other stuff that's that's coming up? We do. Oh, that's a great that's a great question. Um, so today, a little bit later today, yeah, stick around. So because we have um, Dale Bugini is going to be on uh, pro- about two hours from now. Uh, it's eleven thirty here. I don't know in Sydney, his... Dale's last name, but I've. I've... It's one of those things I've always read but never said aloud. So, uh-huh. you know, Bajini, Well, say? I've done enough live streams with him, yeah, that I that I I figured it out one day. Um, but yeah, I'm sure down. I I'm sure I pronounced it incorrectly many many times, um, right. particularly like yeah, on streams or in public where it's recorded. Um, right. <laughs> but he's he's never he's never corrected me. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Bajini. Um, I'll ask him. We'll ask him. That'll be the first question uh, that we'll ask Dale. Um, so yeah, Dale will be coming on and um, doing some illustrations of vehicles. So he always gets asked all the time, like how he he does like a lot of motorbike illustration and things like that, like a lot of cars, like vintage mm. cars and stuff like that. Um, he gets a question all the time, so he's like, "Let's turn a stream. Let's turn it into a stream." So that's what we're doing today. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. That's good. What is this guy? Oh, I thought I'd just sort of add a uh, a, a rower in um, someone to keep the boat going. Um, so I'm just going to get a, uh, uh, a, a Grecian sailor happening here. Mm-hmm. And yeah, have we had any, uh, suggestions come through yet or are, we, are people sort of, uh, warming up? I think we're warming up. I think we're warming up still a bit early. Good. And, uh, I saw, um, they've got, uh, Bianca coming back in as well. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so Bianca's on Wednesday, so Bianca Beers. Um, oh, so Thursday. It's Wednesday now, isn't it? Yeah, Man. yeah. Week's already going super fast. Um, yeah, so Bianca Beers is on um, also midday. Also midday, I think. I should know. Yeah, it's definitely midday. So around the same time as Dale comes on. Um, we also have Stephen Grace coming on um from okay i don't know steven what is what's he do so he works with christopher doyle and co okay do you know you don't know the graphic design world as much as illustration world um so yeah so christopher doyle and co in my my very biased and very uh humble opinion is one of the best branding companies in the world and they're in sydney and um awesome yeah i've known chris for a very long time um and steven is senior designer over there um, so some people might have seen Ian Hay on the stream a couple of times. He also works like within that studio, not for Crystal and Co, but within the same like space. Um, mm. And I also used to work there. So we know oh, we, wow. go, we go we go way back. 
Um, Steven's a fantastic designer. So um, he's been on once before, back in the before times when we were able to hang out with each other um, in a physical yeah. space and use a studio. Um, this is even so long ago. This was in the old studio. So this was in the first studio we were ever in. That's how long it's been. Um, is that the sort of like almost like a space hub kind of thing that was going on? Uh, yeah. The Adobe Studio. Yeah, you saw cool. that one, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You came into that one. Yeah, that was... Maybe pretty, the first live stream. Yeah, that was pretty wild. So I'm just taking, taking a, a it's, it's going to turn into a serious limousine boat here. So I'm just <laughs> adding this. a couple additional decks here by stretching it out. Um, so we have enough space for our, our ongoing menagerium of sailors. Good strategic choice. The long boat. <laughs> All right, let's have a look at chat. What, what questions have we got in here? Perhaps the main character of the famous movie, The Codfather. The Codfather. Tim, you're doing a great job over there. Well done, um, Tim. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so it needs to be in a, an armchair. Um, uh, and, oh boy, I'm trying to remember what... Um, who's, the, who's the actor who's in The Codfather? I <laughs> mean, The Godfather. <laughs> um, the, the main guy, the Don... Who plays him? Oh, it's the guy, Marlon. Guy from Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando. Yeah, yeah. Can't really remember what Marlon Brando looks like, but we'll we'll, we'll do our best with it's this. Like he's got like mothballs in his cheeks during that during that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah. Tim, mate, you're all over it. So good. Festus in the house. Great to see you. Good to see hey, you. Festus. Joining us. Doing? And Camilla, wonderful to see you too. Yeah, we have ducks. Um, we've got, Bahadur, we've got a duck already. Bahadur, so we've got... Bahadur as well. I'm probably pronouncing that incorrectly, but it's wonderful to see you. How are you guys? Can I join you? Absolutely. Jump in. Um, we're taking suggestions. So if you do have any suggestions of what you would like Bill to draw, what can we add um, to this shanty group of sea dogs um marlon brando yep that's right very good um we need a viking at some point i don't mean to jump jump the line here or anything um but johanna oh, yeah. johanna has viking blood so oh, really um is that uh, of sort of a scandinavian descent um or mm. swedish or something like that swedish i believe there you go. Right, I've got a, uh, I don't know, I feel like he needs a lampshade for some reason behind him. <laughs> and he's saying, you come to me on the day of my fish daughter's wedding. <laughs> Ask me for the one thing I cannot give. Or something like that. Something along those lines. Let's see if I can find some better music. Here we go. Cool, all right. Um, uh, let's try a Viking here. Um, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend a, a little time actually sketching this character out. This, this one. So mm. let's, um, let's get a sketching pencil out to do a bit of that work. So you were switching, real you would switch pencil if you're sketching. What's the difference between like sketching and and sort of what you're doing like why would you change to a different pencil uh yeah i mean with with uh this uh the the, the black ink brush that i'm using it's, it's like a very intense pencil um so you're sort of wanting to make very intentional lines with that um mm -hmm. it's very sort of bold confident kind of line um whereas uh when i'm sketching i'm just trying to sort of work out what i'm doing so i'm using something that's uh, a bit more transparent and light that i can sort of work over multiple times to mm -hmm get the get the look that I'm going for. Mm. Um, so I'm just going to start roughing out this character. So it's going to be a happy Viking. Um, and I've got a little helmet. Get some horns going on. I'm going to sort of uh, rough out the, the body of this Viking. Um, maybe a Viking enthused about some invading going on, I guess. Um, I always think about Hagar, either Hagar the Horrible. I don't know if he was a 
Swedish Viking or whereabouts he was meant to be from. But that's always who I think about straight away. Who do you think about straight away if you think about Vikings? Uh, my first thought was kind of like the, um, uh, I know she's not really a Viking, but the sort of Ride of the Valkyrie opera figure, the, uh -huh. the, the lady with the, the big horns on her head. So I, I was thinking that initially, but then... Bugs uh, Bunny, when Bugs thought, Bunny cosplays is... <laughs> um, uh, my second thought was actually um, How to Train Your Dragon, that movie, because I'm pretty sure they're all Vikings, or right. sort of Viking, Viking kind of look. So I'm going to go for a kind of How to Train Your Dragon style character here. Oh, man, I haven't seen um, that. I haven't seen any of those movies. Oh, really? They're, they're actually really good. Uh, I mean, I, sorry, I can't speak for the rest of them, but the first one was great. It's, it's from a really, really nice um, uh, series of children's books. Um, whose dragon drawing style I've, I've stolen a little bit. Um, very, very good dragon illustrations. Oh, cool. Um, and being a Viking, you probably need some kind of axe. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a, that's a good loot outline for this character. So oh, I might just start thinking her in. This could be Joanna's great, 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 great grandmother, perhaps, <laughs> um, on, the, on, on the road. Um, I'm sorry if the, the resemblance isn't quite there, Joanna, but, uh, you know, working working as quick as I can. <laughs> I did see um, in that film, um, well, not in the film, but actually uh, where they were trying to figure out what the dragon would look like. And I know this is, a, this is an old animation trick, but they um, just filmed like a lot of cats like playing. And things like that. Really? And they, oh, and they, that they did like a side, sense. did like a side by side of that of, of um, is it toothless or something? I've seen enough internet. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Like kind of moving around side by side, and it's exactly the same. Like they're like the cat's playing with a ball or something, and it's exactly basically exactly the scene that they've used. Yeah, it's um, a fantastic character because it's 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 a it's a. I mean, it's it's very sort of pure animation stuff because it's a. It's one of the main characters in the movie, but it's, it's, it doesn't speak. So it, it's entirely kind of through mime and movement and all mm. that kind of stuff. So it's some really, really good stuff in the, that movie. A really awesome art direction as well. All right. Homework. Mm. I have my homework. Yeah. Watch that movie. <laughs> all right. Let's come together. And there's some great uh, questions. Sort of great working. Oh, sorry. We always try to talk at the same time today. I don't know what's going on. Um, just <laughs> letting chat know that there have been some great questions and we will get to them. So thank you so much for getting them through. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I am sort of cartooning here um, and, and working at speed. But, um, but I thought because this was a slightly more figure orientated one, if anyone has any questions about drawing the human figure or anatomy or anything like that, mm. please feel to free to chuck those in because I can sort of... Uh, some of that stuff in as, as we go along with these drawings. And I'm not sure All if right. you mentioned it this time, um, but there was just a question just around the brushes that, that you're using. So you're just using a straight up, like normal, just pencil brush before to do your outline. Um, but now you're using yeah. this like particular hard brush. Yeah, so I was just using the sort of standard, just circular brush um, with, with a lower transparency um, before um, for my sketching. And um, a lot of people like to, to sketch with a with a blue brush it kind of just fades into the background a little bit it's an old sort of uh, mm. uh, comic artist uh, trick um, and uh, but now I'm using one of the Kyle T Webster um, uh, ink brushes um, for, for doing this this more final line work cool torn in there um, and just we'll do get a our quick screen. shout out um, for the Carl T. Webster brush. I think um, so many people might have seen um, on our stream. Uh, we're using one, the Carl T. Webster brush for Black Lives Matter. Um, so all of the donations from that brush um, went to help uh, a lot of charities. Really? Yeah, it was really cool. Oh, um, fantastic! And awesome. um, and so yeah, and they just I think they announced like it was a couple of days ago. It's like you know fourteen thousand US dollars were raised or something. So anyone that bought the brush, oh, well done, good amazing. stuff. Um, I think Johanna has shared a link to it. If it's still available, I'm not sure it's still available. I know it's temporary. Um, and then Scott Belsky, who um, you know founded founded Behance, um, mm. 
mm. one of the co-founders uh, matched it as well, which is pretty cool. So um, yeah. Yeah. it's pretty nice to see like the creative community and how amazing everyone can be like, cause it was donation only. You could just download it for free if you wanted to, if you couldn't donate as well. Um, yeah, and, yeah. and that's how much people gave. So good on you, everybody. Awesome. That's awesome. That's really nice. Cool. All right, Flynn, hit me. What's, what's, oh my what's gosh. Been coming up? So many. Um, I'm going to give you three and then you can pick. How about we do it that sure, way? Sure, um, sure. So Old Man in the Sea Biscuit. <laughs> uh, it was okay. great fun. Um, a, cat, a Cat with Nine Tails and okay, cool. and a Kraken, which we were talking about just before we went live. We're like, oh man, someone's going to have to say Kraken, right? So uh, Yeah, we're oh, going to have to work Kraken at some point. Um, let me see if I can combine them. So we've got Old Man <laughs> in the Sea, uh, sea Biscuit. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we've got a Kraken and we've got Cat of Nine Tails. Right. Um, and I think I saw Tim put something about uh, a crow's nest. Yes. Um, I'm running out a little bit of headroom here, so I'm just going to expand my canvas a bit. Um, and let's see if we can combine a couple of those things together. I'm just going to drop the fill on my boat so I can see what I'm doing a bit. Um, and... Um, all right, let's let's see what we can do here. All right, gonna get a nice big brush to start this cracking off. Um, start of it, um, and let's get someone in the, the crow's nest up here. And I might have our cat up in the crow's nest, and then we'll get a mast for our boat. And then the Kraken can be doing classic Kraken pose, hmm. um, climbing, climbing the, the, the mast. And then uh, I'm struggling to, um, I guess I could have the old man riding the Kraken. Maybe the Kraken can be sea biscuit. Um, um, uh, let's do that. Okay, so we've got a bunch of, uh, Tentacles coming up here from our, our Kraken character. <laughs> our old man happening here. Start on the uh, cat with the nine tails here. Never really learnt how to draw cats properly. I um, I've been doing a, a couple of series of books which require me to draw lots and lots and lots of uh, individual things. So I've been doing um, lots of bunnies right now, um, <laughs> and uh, um, so I'm sort of doing. I'm probably averaging a hundred bunnies a day right now. So I've definitely got my bunnies down, but wow. cats. Cats I've got a, a, a while to go with. I've never had to sort of do mass cats for anything. So I'm afraid this is the, the, the best we're going to get with that. I used to have a cat, but for some reason, I, 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 my family had a dog called Oscar, which I draw constantly. Um, mm. But uh, I never got into drawing Mozart the cat. I think he was just a mean, scary cat. So uh, <laughs> he didn't get quite as much of the attention as adorable Oscar. Poor Mozart. He wasn't appreciated in his time. No, he wasn't. <laughs> Sorry, say that again. You cut out just for a second. Do a cat or a dog at home? I, uh, I know no. you're talking about sort of your, your history with with a, a broad selection of animals. Um, right. Your past. But, um, no, no, no cat. cat no. Um, I had a cat in the city, but then she was getting. She couldn't really handle the city very well, and so she ended up. All oh, right. My my poor mum, um, the vet, like ended up with with my cat. So my oh, it's right. basically my brother's cat who's who's at home, um, and she just kind of chills out there. And she's a bit more of a, um, let's say she's a jerk cat. Like I love her so much to pieces, but she's very she's she's very standoffish. She's not very cuddly or anything. Um, yeah. Very yeah. very much oh. the stereotypical. Um, Unless you're feeding me or anything, I'm kind of a little bit 
I'll just do my own thing and you stay you stay over there. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Um, but yeah. before before well, I had my daughter, um, we had we were looking after a friend's cat because she had a she had a daughter and she was like I can't really handle the cat at the same time. Um, yeah, and so yeah. we looked after that cat for so long that it felt like it was my cat. Um, mm -hmm. But now she's back, so no animals at the moment. Just a right. small child. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's enough to be going on with. It's plenty. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was about to say the same thing that um, that Tim that Tim said in chat. Yeah, I'm not really sure how to draw a cat, and then like a second later, draws a perfect cat. It's <laughs> <laughs> exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> not a perfect cat. Um, so we've got a nine tails going on. We've got a kraken. We've got an old man. Uh, I guess he should have some sort of uh, um, writing thing uh, with our kraken. Maybe the kraken's just trying to get the cat down from the tree. Um, stuck up there. How often do you get to draw like a kraken or like a squid? I feel like they're like super fun to draw. Like with all uh, the, like the yeah, tentacles yeah, yeah. and arms and how and you could like this one like the, it's it's a bit like an iceberg. Like you see the top of it but it's actually like probably you, you can give that sense of size. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah, not as not as often as I should, really. Um, uh, it is a, it is a fantastic. I've always thought octopuses or, or krakens are they're, they're really good compositional devices because you can kind of they're so wiggly you can put them in sort of any position you need them to be. So um, they're they're nice and flexible. Your average kraken. Um, okay, I'm just gonna have to paint the base of that out. Let's, let's take that whole composition, shrink it down a bit. Um, and then let's just do a little bit of fill underneath. Hey, I'm just going to paint a little bit. Sorry, go ahead. There's also a question about um, perspective. So Camilla was just asking, I'm having some issues with perspective lately. There's a character I need to draw for a client uh, and it lacks movement. Oh, sorry if I'm not reading this correct, uh, but I keep failing. So yeah, I guess, do you have any kind of tips on, on perspective drawing? Oh yeah. Um, gosh, uh, there's, there's a lot to say about perspective drawing. Um, uh, so, I mean, uh, I'm guessing from her question, it's more about uh, perspective on a, a specific character. So it's a figure that, that she's struggling with, um, uh, which is really, really difficult. Um, I, again, sorry, I'm going to reiter reiterate my boring set. Always the same general <laughs> advice, which is life drawing, which is uh, amazing for doing perspective in figure drawing, which people refer to as uh, foreshortening. Um, and uh, it's when, when you're drawing from your imagination, you forget the extent of the weird shapes that the human body can make and drawing it from life, you get a much better sense of uh, the strange things that happen with perspective and, and the human figure. Mm. Um, so, so doing drawing from life is, is, is really, really helpful. Um, if you've got this specific job that you just need to get through, um, uh, sorry, I forgot the name of the questioner. That was Camilla. But, but, Camilla. Um, but if you just need to get through this character, um, I mean, the easiest way is to either take a photo of yourself or someone who's willing to um, pose for you um, uh, and using using a real person as reference. That's really, really helpful. Mm. Um, uh, there are some sort of digital posing uh, bits of software where you basically pose a digital figure and then use that as your reference. Um, that That's good. Um, I think those tools can be a bit dangerous because you can start to sort of overly rely on them. Um, mm. And uh, and it, you sort of start falling back on that tool all the time. Um, uh, so in the short term, I would I would just find someone to, to get some reference photography from. Um, and in the long term, life drawing would be my main advice. Um, but also the other thing is, maybe I'll just do some quick sketching here, is just really uh, the stuff you see in drawing books of sort of when someone takes a figure and breaks it down into blocks. It can be frustrating because the, the, the disconnect between the jumble of boxes and a beautifully finished figure feels mm -hmm. so great sometimes. But that stuff is really useful. So say I've got a character here that's reaching out to me with their, their hand. So I've got a head here. A neck. We've got a bit of body, 
also coming down and you want their hand coming out into the foreground maybe so say this is a iron man style character so we've got him doing his blaster hand thing mm -hmm. um just sort of drawing the cylinders that connect um the shoulder to the wrist to the elbow and drawing those shapes in in a basic form all that stuff does really does really help out in the end of just breaking it down into sort of manageable manageable chunks what does the cylinder look like from this angle um and then if there was an arm within that cylinder what would the arm look like and 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 just sort of breaking it down into little sort of manageable pieces so you don't start out trying to draw your hand and your arm into the shoulder all in one go if you can kind of make it into these 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 sort of manageable sections uh, you can really sort of piece the drawing together that way so that would be my my spiel on perspective drawing that's awesome okie dokie so um, useful. any other suggestions yeah um there was some talk about um like a kind of grumpy crow before which i thought was super cool uh, I've missed it. Crow. I missed it in, it's been buried in chat a little bit. So maybe someone can, but yeah, we'll talk when we're talking about the crow's nest, like having this like grumpy crow up there and I'm definitely getting like, oh, yeah. um, what is it? Robin hood, you know, the animated Robin hood, like the, the old one where he's a fox, yes, yes, like yes, those, yes, those yeah. crow, like those crows, like those grumpy, um, they're the jailers. I, I think they might be vultures in there, but you know what I'm getting at. There's, there's like cool crows. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, okie dokie. Maybe I'll try and work with it. I can't remember exactly what the, um, the, the Robin Hood character looks like. So forgive me if I'm screwing it up. It was, uh, oh, thanks. Thanks. Uh, Johanna's let me know. So it was maybe a sickly crow looking horribly green around the gills. Oh, dear. okay. Okay. Um, oh, how do you draw a nauseous crow? <laughs> um, um, nauseous crow. New band name. <laughs> kind of magpie shaped, aren't they? But they've got these very sort of Is, it, is the Australian crow called a, um, uh, a corvid? I think that's the name for it. Although, oh, look, is it? it's like, yeah, I think it's part of like the magpie family or something like that. But there's an there's an Australian type of crow. I just remember because uh, um, Jackie Winter, the agency that I work with, um, has a um, sort of like an online community called uh, Corvid, which mm. they they brought out just sort of six months before the, the, the COVID virus came out, which was a very unfortunate piece of um, mm. uh, branding for them. Um, um, but if anybody wants to check out, it's a really awesome community. Um, but yeah, that was based on, I think, the Australian Australian genus of crow. I'm sure someone in the chat can correct me on that. I'm mm. in no way a red bird watcher. Maybe um, I might have to do a bit. The genus is yeah. Corvus, the Australian raven. Corvus. All this. There you go. Thank you for whoever sorted that out. Um, all right. I might color this guy in so I can make him a little bit green. Um, <laughs> being such a, a dark colored bird, it's going to disappear a little bit, but, but that's, that's the look of them. It can be unfortunate with branding when like something, something pops up, like, like COVID, COVID, like, you know, something like that. And you've just always been yeah. around my, um, my old boss used to, um, have a design agency in Australia called ISIS. Yes. I heard about that. There was a construction company called ISIS, wasn't there mm -hmm. as well? Yeah. And yeah, I think I in, um, a couple of giant ISIS posters in, in Sydney and you think, what? Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Yeah. Um, all right. Oh, let's make that guy a little bit green around the gills green around the gills. <laughs> it's 
And for those that don't know, Jackie Winter, um, agency that um, Bill is at, um, and also some other artists that are coming on this week. Um, oh, his great. Name is, is named after... Uh, we have Adriana Picker coming on on Friday. Oh, fantastic. Okay, great. Um, so, yeah, Stephen and Adriana both... Um, well, Steve has been on before a long time ago, but, yeah, both doing their, like, working from home debut. So it's very exciting. So... Um, some awesome. new faces, new faces for people and, and, and work to, to learn about and people to learn about and everything. Um, but yeah, my fun fact was that Jackie Winter is a, is a bird in, it is. in Australia. It is. Yeah. It's also a, there's a, there's a, um, a band in Melbourne also called Jackie Winter and we had the 10th anniversary party and we had Jackie Winter performing at the Jackie Winter party. Oh really? Great. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. It was cool. Um, cool. Okie dokie. Oh, nausea bubbles. Thank you, Steve. Uh, I think nausea bubbles turn up in Asterix a lot. It was kind of like the go-to. I don't know why bubbles are the, 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 the thing, but mm. anyway, there it is. <laughs> um, Okie dokie, trying to have a look at what's um, going on in chat. It seems to be mostly bird talk right now. Um, a lot of bird talk. So, any- um, let's throw in some, some new suggestions. Maybe there could be something flying. So we have the bird. Yes, we have yeah. we have we have the um, the bird up there, but they're a bit sick, so they're not you know not airborne at the moment. Um, so maybe we could do something with the with the sky. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to give us a little bit more boat here. Um, Festus was asking um, about Captain Crunch before the cereal. I don't think it made it to Australia. I don't, I've never. I've certainly never eaten it. Um, but like a lot of American kind of culture, we kind of know what it is. From TV. <laughs> yes, um, I, can't, I can't remember. Maybe I'll, I'll pull up some Captain Crunch reference and they can get a little... Oh, sorry about that, everyone. Um, I have eaten Captain Crunch in the past. I went to America um, in my my youth and um, I was was overjoyed to, to have some Captain Crunch. It is um, pretty extraordinary stuff. Um, is it just sugar? Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's right. sort of sugar with a sprinkling of wheat on top. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, maybe we'll have Captain Crunch just airborne up here, so we can we can work him in that way. Uh, so again, I might just sketch out this character because he's a bit bit more complicated. Um, uh, he's got to have his spoon of cereal. Um, he's got I love his it. Cartoony hat. And while while uh, we're working on Captain Crunch, um, don't forget mm-hmm. let's let's have some more ideas for for when we um, we need to fill up the sky. I think not completely yeah, full. Yeah, a little bit of negative space is always good. Um, yeah, but we need some airborne critters and creatures. Yeah, and for any, anyone just joining in, uh, we're 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 doing live request drawing. So um, feel free to put any suggestions in the comments of what you want, and we're. We're sort of filling out this Grecian ship with uh, all co- sorts of uh, sailing characters. So we've just finished uh, Cat of Nine Tales, The Nautilus Crow, um, Old Man of the Sea riding a Kraken, and now we're working on uh, the famous Captain Crunch. Um, oh, it's a much more extreme form of cartooning, this, this kind of thing here. Everything's sort of very over the top. Um, Let's get the hands in. He's got his little admiral's outfit going on. <laughs> All right, that will do. Been doing quite a lot of sort of uh, much more traditional cartooning stuff recently, and it's a it's an interesting mode to sort of dive in and out of doing more realistic drawing and 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 cartooning. It's sort of um, you kind of end up with this internal um, sort of like over the top slider in your head of like a nose becomes gigantic and right. everything sort of gets blown out to these crazy dimensions. And like everything, sort of trans- you're trying to exaggerate everything. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And you sort of, you sort of, um, I don't, I don't know. You sort of uh, lose sense of like, uh, 
um, I don't know how big you can go with the nose. There's there's nothing too big. It's sort of you're living on the the cartoonist edge of how far you can go with it. <laughs> I don't know. It's an interesting answer to be in. All right, he's a enthusiastic captain here. With his spoon. You know, what? I'm going to give him a little toothbrush in this hand just to balance it out. <laughs> it's like the cookie. Kids. It's like the cookie monster. Like you know, when we were kids, yeah, it's, it's a just sometimes like, food. Yeah, now it's a sometimes food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. It's so good. I've been trying to improve my own. Uh, um, I'm, I'm a diabetic, so I've been trying to improve my diabetes management. So this is this is partially for me as well. It's right. a personal reminder. <laughs> Keep my sugars in order. So does that impact like what like your diet and what is that like the main impact? Uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit different because I'm uh, type one, so I'm sort of insulin. Uh, I, I sort of need to replace the insulin right in my body. So you don't. It's uh, with people with type two, they yeah, like most of the management is just through like most of the treatments just through uh, exercise and, and diet. Mm. Um, uh, so, I mean, the good thing about type one is that you can inject insulin and that sort of makes up a bit of that thing. But I know I do need to, um, sort of watch, watch diet and exercise and all that kind of stuff as well. So no more Captain Crunch. No more Captain Crunch. No. <laughs> I mean, unfortunately I'm sort of like trying to be healthy and have muesli, but the majority of the muesli you get is basically the same as Captain Crunch, just with sort of more healthy looking pictures on the box. <laughs> all very very sugary it's so good though all right here's our little captain crunch get a couple of crunches flying through the air as well um yeah festus has um clearly tasted it and he said the cereal is really awful too it had sharp edges and you could cut cut your cheek uh or your tongue if you didn't wait five minutes for the milk to soak it Oh yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know, I I do remember that specifically about Captain Crunch <laughs> about it just ruining the the roof of your mouth. It's amazing, um, like what your feet we marketed to kids, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's crazy. One thing I also had in it, and I was saying in New Mexico, and they grow purple corn there, so you can get purple corn flakes, um, which look really fun, but uh, uh, actually disgusting. <laughs> um, all right, just looking at the chat, I see Chris Allen suggested a mechanical owl from Clash of the Titans. Uh, all right, no idea what that looks like. Um, I'm just going to do a little Google here. Mechanical owl from Clash of the Titans. Oh, it's the original Clash of the Titans. Oh, but it turned up in the 2010 one as well. Cool. Is this a Harry... Do you know his name? Harry Muchenhausen or something? Harry Hausen? I think was the, um, the right. animator who did all the Clash of the Titans. I think someone stuff. mentioned his name in, in chat. I did not know that. Um, he's extraordinary. There's a documentary that they did about him a little while ago. And he was sort of the go-to guy in Hollywood for an absurd amount of time, like sort of 40, 50 years that did all the stop motion monsters. So um, uh, whenever there's a sort of sea monster or a skeleton or a Kraken or anything like that. It was just basically this one guy. And he actually designed a bunch of um, dinosaurs that were going to be um, um, the, uh, the Jurassic Park dinosaurs. They actually designed and sort of did tests for the whole movie to be stop motion. And they're extraordinary. And then at the last minute, um, Steven Spielberg decided that uh, um, the uh, special effects had finally got up to up to scratch, and they they changed it to be all CG. But oh, in, wow. until the last minute, um, Jurassic Park was going to be entirely stop motion. Which is pretty cool. Oh man, that's and amazing! I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, all right. Just just from the top of my head, this is going to be my 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 take on the mechanical owl actually you know what uh because it's not looking very mechanical let's give it i know this isn't in the picture but we're going to give them a little wind up thing at the back <laughs> Ta -da! mechanical all right any other suggestions Flynn? yeah for sure um there was a yeah so chris was the one who mentioned previously the harry houston films uh he was suggesting a skeleton mm -hmm. with a cutlass like in the old ooh, harry ooh, houston okay. films yeah yeah 
I love all that uh, old stop motion stuff. I mean, it's it's just amazing what they were doing. I always feel like I have to apologize to um, Dale when I'm doing uh, skeletons on the on the live stream. <laughs> yeah, uh, he's he's branched out a lot from the. I was, I was talking to him uh, online uh, last night. It's amazing how. Um, I mean, for, for there's a lot of people who work from a sort of design background who who are keen to get into illustration, and uh, I think a lot of people struggle with that transition. Um, of going from someone who's used to being able to produce very polished design work and then sort mm. of dealing with with um, with more sort of traditional drawing and getting into that illustration mindset. But um, for anyone sort of doing any of that, Dale's a great person to look at because over the past couple of years, he has just come so far with his sort of more sort of traditional illustration drawing stuff. It's really impressive what, what he's doing. Um, so definitely check him out later today. His stuff is awesome. Oh, that's nice. I'll tell him you said that. I feel because I talked about um, uh, anatomy before, I have to have some semblance of <laughs> accuracy with this skeleton, but it's not really <laughs> working out. <laughs> My best approximation of a pelvis, that'll do. I'm gonna get my is that a tibia and my fibia, or is that in your arm? Oh man, don't ask me that on the stream. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know bone anatomy. <laughs> yeah, I've, I only did a little bit of a sort of traditional anatomy of drawing. I wish I'd done more. <laughs> um, I think it could have been really, really helpful. Hey, RB in the chat. RB says hello to Bill as well. Hello, RB. Good to see you back. <laughs> All right. I'll leave that guy there. That's kind of fun. I need to draw more skeletons. They're good. All right. All right, uh, I'm just reading through the chat. Tim's got a challenge. Someone sitting on a cannon, lighting the fuse by focusing the sun using a monocle. Ooh, that's great. That's a good <laughs> idea. Nice to have some... Uh... I've been drawing on the wrong layer the whole time. Classic schoolboy <laughs> error there. Okay, I can fix it. All right, so it's a little bit, a bit two-dimensional, so maybe I'll try and make this a slightly three-dimensional cannon. So let's have it coming out there. Slightly cartoony cannon. Uh, so we've got our fuse at the back. It's being lit. So someone's got to be... Uh, can they be holding the monocle or does it need to be on their face? You can't really be lighting it if it's on their face. So That's a true. monocle here. Um, I guess they can be holding it like so. Um, and they've got to be sitting atop the cannon. Uh, let's give them some nice coat tails. Keep the questions coming, um, guys. We've got a little over like 30 minutes left. And also, I, should, I haven't mentioned this for a while. If you are watching us on YouTube, jump over to behance.net slash live if you want to join the chat. Get your um, suggestions in. Get your questions answered. Say hello. Hang out with the rest of us. Tim says, yes, holding the monocle. Okay.
We'll have that little monocle chain going. And um, we've got our fuse lighting up there. Uh, let's get some structure to this cannon going on. <laughs> All right, now let's put a uh, uh, helpful sun. Gotta have sunnies. Oh, he's cool. I think the Australian Association of Illustrators has, has some pretty strict rules about sunglasses on, on suns. They can really crack down on people, but um, drawing sunglasses about suns, they're pretty strict on that sort of thing. <laughs> so, don't want to get in trouble with the powers that be. Mm -hmm. There's another question just around uh, what brush you're using. Oh, yep. Yeah. Um, uh, so it's it's one of the uh, Carl T. Webster uh, brushes, um, and it's from the Inkbox set. Awesome. Um, uh, it's a favorite. All right, let's get some rays coming off that sun. Um, and let's go some traditional dotted line sun rays. Getting really primary school on this thing. I love it. And it would only be right if we had a, a, a cannonball coming out, I think. So, uh, um, let's incorporate some top shadows, a couple highlights, some refracted shadows on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Paying off my art school education via this cannonball. I love it. Hey, Matt from Hobart. Hey, Matt Mario. from Hobart. How you doing? Mario or Link? Mario or Link. Oh, okay. Um, this, is, this is like, uh, was I telling you that story about not being able to draw Pikachu that one time? Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's, let's, do, let's do a Mario. I'm afraid I am going to get some reference, though. <laughs> um, I don't have the... Uh, the chops to execute a uh, non-reference Mario, um, but maybe we can have a, a pirate Mario. He's the kind of guy who's always changing his costume anyway. That's true. Um, so, so let's go with a pirate Mario. Wahoo! Um, <laughs> um, all right. I always like thinking about with a lot of these characters, like uh, the um, like what were the design constraints when they were first designed? Like how yeah. I mean, I know lots of cartoons had sort of that bubble nose, but um, when you look at sort of like the very first iterations of Mario, like mm. it, I mean, he's basically like ten pixels or something like that. So it's so interesting to see something that's like a really beautifully finished character now. Mm. But it's just kind of been extrapolated out from that original sort of um, series of pixels. I mean, I suppose they were drawing something already when they're doing that. But but it was designed with the idea that it had to be sort of incredibly simple when it was first put together. Mm. There's a fun fact about that. I think. Well, I think it's fun. You get to make your own decision. Everybody else. Um, okay. That when Mar <laughs> how fun it is. Okay. Cool. <laughs> You're the boss, Bill. Um, but when Mario was jumping in the original one, he was actually punching the brick, not hitting it with his head, ah, uh, by, right. a by a pixel. Um, yeah, yeah. And and there was a lot of debate around that, um, but Nintendo confirmed yeah. it. And um, but Luigi was hitting it with his head <laughs> in, oh, really? in later ones. <laughs> so yeah, they started out That's Luigi great. from behind, definitely from the very beginning. His brother did not learn from his example. <laughs> Actually, my, I, my partner was playing uh, Mario Odyssey for a while. I was trying to remember where mm -hmm. I got the Mario. Uh, I think you can play as Mario as a pirate in Mario Odyssey. So mm -hmm. the origins of this character. So it's given those big pirate cuffs, maybe a sort of uh, 
Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band style jacket. Um, There's a lot of seafaring military on this boat, more than I would have expected. Yeah. We've got I Captain Crunch. Um, we've got Mario the pirate. Mm. I guess he's not military, is he? He's just a pirate. Yeah. I think a lot of um, pirates were military, really. They were sort of just mercenaries more than right. sort of uh, um, anything else. Mario is best when gliding on the turtle shell. Yeah, I th feel like Mario Kart was peak Mario. Like, that was amazing. Like, and I mean, like, Nintendo yeah. 64, sitting around with your friends, split screening, throwing shells at each other. I mean, friendships Absolutely. ended at the end of those games. <laughs> um, all right, let's put a little failing to draw a parrot here. Okay, any other suggestions coming through, Flynn? Yes, and I love this one. It's a Tim. It's a Tim special. Um, a mouse yeah. sitting on the cannonball. Going wee! A mouse sitting on the cannonball. Okay, I think we're going to have to move Mario. Um, uh, but uh, but that would be good. Maybe I'll drop the opacity of that layer and draw on top so I can see a little bit more of what I'm doing. And controversial move. I'm going to change brushes, folks. It's happening. <gasps> My gosh. In real time. Um, shut it down. Okay. Shut it down. Shut down screen. <laughs> Are you using a Carl T. Webster brush? Uh, no, I'm just going to use a standard brush. No. Uh, it's just because I'm working. Uh, Blasphemy. Uh, <laughs> um, um, because uh, I'm working quite a bit smaller, I just want a bit more detail. Uh, maybe I'll try and do one of those like wind tunnel kind of looks where they're um, oh, right. all getting blown around. Trying to think about what that reminds me of. For some reason, it reminds me of um, Ice Age. Not not the oh, sloth, yeah, the, yeah. Squir the squirrel, like all the kind of crazy yeah, I'm antics. Yeah, I can't remember what it's called. Is it called like Scratch or something like that? Yeah, the, the character, um, which was designed by one of my favorite illustrators, who I'm going to forget the name of, uh, Peter Deceive. If anybody wants to check out a fantastic illustrator, and also someone who sort of had the dream position of being a, I think he did lots of work for the New Yorker doing covers for them mm. and um, then had a bunch of characters picked up and designed. He did lots of stuff on Finding Nemo um, and then did, he did all the Ice Age characters. Um, and yeah, it's amazing if you look through his portfolio, how much of the sort of DreamWorks and Pixar stuff comes wow. from, from him. It's really awesome. And he's one of those, those, those lucky illustrators. I'm, I'm sure there's lots of them around uh, now, but people who are really classically trained. So he does beautiful paintings and watercolors, um, but has sort of um, been able to have a bunch of his work made into really nicely finished um, uh, 3D feature, uh, yeah, CG features. Mm. This is one stressed out mouse. Mouse having a rough day. Mm. Those big incisors in. I don't know if mice actually have a bottom, they do have a bottom row of teeth, right? They must. Yeah, they chewing away like that. Because they gnaw on things, right? So yeah, they must have, yeah. they have something down the bottom. I was going for a bush walk with someone on the weekend who was telling me uh, a lot about, um, they were very enthusiastic about beavers um uh, uh which i think is a form of rodent as well 
and apparently like lots of rodents their their front teeth never stop growing because they're constantly sort of gnawing them down by doing so much chewing on stuff um so for their entire life they're growing longer and longer inside mm. the teeth um and apparently there are different styles of beaver dam architecture in different regions they'll have different approaches to um oh really wow designing designing their dams which is pretty cool all right i'm, I'm happy with that guy Bring yeah, in. got confirmation that it's Scrat. Um, Scrat, there you go. Tim says, this is without a doubt the funniest expression a mouse has ever had. <laughs> <laughs> and some people with me uh, with uh, Nintendo 64, Golden Years. Yeah, the controller was right. weird, huh? But it actually ended up being like such a good controller. Mm. Um, Okie dokie. I think we're going to need a little bit more boat. As I say in Jaws, we will need a bigger boat. We're going to need um, a bigger boat. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was a suggestion no, no. a while ago. Uh, I think yeah. I may have missed, but I'm remembering now. Um, uh, something about music. So I think someone suggested a bard earlier on. Um, and I think uh, Tim had okay. mentioned, hey, someone should be playing some music here. So I think um, okay. I think that might be a good next direction. Bard is in order. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm kind of thinking of the bard from uh, Asterix. I can't really remember what he looks like, but I might try a sort of oh, yeah. similar kind of vibe um, with, with, with our character. What was his shtick? So, what was his whole thing? Like, he'd always get, like, something dropped on his head or something? He was called or... uh, Cacophonix, and I think he just yes. sounded really bad, so nobody ever wanted to hear him sing. So uh, they okay. were constantly... Um, I think tying him to trees, I think was the thing. Right, yeah. I remember him being yeah. treated treated rather poorly. I can't remember exactly yeah, how. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's a tough life for an artist. I can feel that kind of criticism. <laughs> Even when an artist is uh, in control of what happens in that world, the artist is still not appreciated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Uh, question, yep. are, are you using a Wacom tablet? Uh, yes, yeah. So I'm using, uh, on my desktop, uh, I'm using a, uh, a Wacom tablet. And I kind of almost evenly split my time these days between using uh, a Wacom and drawing on the iPad. I do lots and lots of iPad drawing now. Um, but my main my main tool for work is, is the um, uh, Cintiq. So, um, yeah, using the 22 HD. And why would you use one or the other? Like, are you, are you just faster? Is it more powerful? What's the, is it ergonomically uh, better to be sitting at, at a desk? Like what's, yeah, what's the thought process there? Yeah, I mean, it's a different kind of approach. I mean, for, for me, the, um, um, uh, I can use sort of uh, full size uh, programs like Photoshop um, on my desktop computer. Mm. Um, so having, the Cintiq screen, which is a nice big screen that I can use for that, uh, definitely works for, for me best. If I'm doing more kind of casual sketching or just sort of penciling something out, just sitting on the couch with the iPad just is really relaxing and nice. So I think I I, I like I like drawing like that. It's it's very sort of chilled out way of, of drawing. Mm. Um, uh, so yeah, I suppose if I'm doing more kind of high-end professional work, I'd be working on the Cintiq or on the desktop. And if I'm just doing a bit of casual sketching, um, uh, I love yeah, sketching on the iPad. Yeah. So, nice. I mean, I mean, the main difference is the software that you can use on, on either one. I mean, the, the gap is definitely closing. They're getting closer and closer, but, um, but uh, still I prefer using sort of all the, um, uh, sort of power and, and range of, of full Photoshop when I'm doing most of my work. I mean, for, for anyone starting off or, or hoping to do some drawing, um, either, either works great. Cool. Okie dokie. Um, he used to say Philistine. Sorry, I'm just looking at Chris Allen's thing uh, of what uh, <laughs> Cacophony used to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, That's awesome. I think, um, didn't Captain Haddock from Tintin used to say Philistines a lot? I think blistering barnacles and Philistines were the most popular phrases. Blistering barnacles? Um, Who said that? 
Uh, Captain Haddock right. from Tintin. Yeah. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, Okie dokie. Any other suggestions come through, Flynn? I yeah, can start so, working on? Yeah, so um, Camilla's suggesting the boat needs some more oyster shells. Um, oh, yeah. I'm just yeah. bumping through um, a sea cucumber. <laughs> Interpret that as okay. you will. Yeah. <laughs> sea yeah. cucumber. Um, Captain Underpants was also another another suggestion. Um, we went down there. Well, I, I, know, I know your daughter's probably not the 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 the, the right age yet, Flint. But um, uh, once when you do get into constant kids movie territory, Captain Underpants is fantastic. It's really? surprisingly good. It's really okay. really good. Yeah, okay. yeah. Hey, we're pretty excited. Pretty excited to get to the stage where we can just watch all the Disney movies again. Because uh, my wife yeah, and I are just such yeah. huge fans of every of, of yeah. everything, especially like the musicals and and all that sort of stuff and the old classics. So, pretty excited for that. Yeah, but yeah she's cer certainly not there yet. It's all about um, Emma Wiggle when she gets a chance. Is that Emma Wiggle? Yeah, it's all it's all about Emma Wiggle. Uh, just every I've heard everything. of Emma Wiggle before. She's the female uh, female Wiggle, and she's huge. Oh wow! And she and she's sort of like. Spun, spun off from the group? Has she gone solo? No, she's like part of the group. So she used to be at some at some stages. She was Dorothy the dinosaur. Um, oh, fun, right. fun, fun fact. Um, mm. Everybody, um, you learn about this stuff when you have when you have a daughter. <laughs> and um, and uh, yeah, now she's like front and center. Like she's the by far the most famous Wiggle. Oh, that's so cool! Because I remember uh, it being so news when she 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 joined the group. Mm. Um, um, so uh, that's that's awesome. Yeah, she's pretty cool, and um, she she signs. She does sign language as well. Um, so oh, often right. in her songs, she'll be signing out the lyrics and everything like that. She's awesome. Oh, she's that's pretty cool. so cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Cool. I, I decided I'm going to do a sea cucumber. But I'm going to do like a uh, like a submarine sea cucumber. Awesome. Um, so I'm going a little bit uh, Beatles submarine with this one. <laughs> Um, what else does a submarine has? It could have I'd, a. I'd play. We all live in a yellow submarine, but I don't have the rights to it. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Once you get a budget of a bazillion dollars, you can yeah. do that. Yeah. yeah. So everybody individually press play right now. Uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll listen to it together. Have a little sing along. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. So I've got a little uh, submarine sea cucumber here. Um, <laughs> And I might fill that one in. The only drawback to this brush is that when you're coloring things quickly, you want to make like a nice, uh, using the magic wand tool, you can select the area um, that you're going to color in. Mm. But because it's nice and scratchy, it leaves all these little gaps and it's very hard to select. I mean, right. that's a nice thing about it, but it, it slows down the process a little bit. Mm. Um, I'm just going to click my quick mask tool. I'm sure I've got all my pixels in and I can fill that guy in. Maybe we can here. Surfacing to say hi to his friends. Sea cucumbers are amazing. I don't know if you've spent any time watching videos of sea cucumbers online. You may not mm. be as busy as me, um, <laughs> spending hours watching sea cucumbers, <laughs> but they are totally extraordinary. They're basically aliens. Places, <laughs> uh, <places> you need. <laughs> um, so yeah, you're probably having a look at the same ones. I am a parrot who is also a Shakespearean actor. Wow. Okay. I yeah. Like, yeah. I like. I like that. Um, Make the make that parrot bold like Patrick Stewart, <laughs> and then to pay or not to pay. So there you go, lots of <laughs> parrot. Oh, well, I think I got to try the Shakespearean actor parrot. Yeah. Um, again, I think I might need to sketch this one out. It's a bit of a tricky one. <laughs> um, uh, let's, let's move my brush play transparent. Okay, so. Got a parrot. I had, I had a close call with a parrot. Oh, it's terrible. We've done too many live streams. I'm, I'm, I'm worrying about retelling parrot stories on the live stream. Um, 
I tell you about almost getting parrot fever in the mountains while we were moving? No, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> um, uh, when we were moving into our new place uh, um, on, on the moving day, there was this, we were sort of packing up this trailer outside the front of my house and this parrot just wandered into the middle of the road and then just stood there while traffic was sort of speeding past it on either side. And I was wondering what was going on with this parrot. And eventually I went and picked the parrot up and took it to the other side of the road and it kind of just hung out there. And this lady that was passing was like, make sure you wash your hands, you're gonna get parrot fever. Um, so I went and washed my hands. And then it turns out all these people in the Blue Mountains have been catching parrot fever from, from uh, parrots with this wow. specific parasitic illness um and it was a close call and then i got um i got the flu straight afterwards so i i, I was convinced for a couple of days that i had parrot fever but um uh happy to say I, um i'm i think i'm parrot fever free awesome wow yeah close, close call, call. <laughs> yeah it was amazing this, this parrot so was sort of like was sitting around on the sidewalk after I'd, I, I'd moved it and then it did this extraordinary thing where it walked up to a tree and then kind of like a cartoon just went horizontal and just walked straight up the tree like it was just walking, walking horizontally but That's just vertically up the side of this tree and then just <laughs> hung around in the branches there it was a very strange parrot interaction animals are weird yeah. <laughs> all right we've got a little hamlet parrot going on here um so i might start inking that guy in uh, how are we doing for time, Flynn? Are we going till 10 o'clock? Yeah, well, a little bit before. So we've got about seven, seven or eight minutes. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Put a mask on the parrot. <laughs> a mask on the parrot? Shakespearean actors wear masks? Uh, no, like I think the parrot, um, because of parrot fever. Parrot fever, then you oh, can right, right, right. mask. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. All right, mm -hmm. we'll get that Elizabethan rough going on, which I'm sure is going to come back into fashion anytime soon. Yeah, I mean, I've got mine in my closet. I just I'm waiting for the right time. You just got to wait for the right moment, you know. Everything that's old is new again, all that kind of stuff. Mm. Yeah. Cyclical nature of <laughs> fashion. <laughs> yeah, them and my pantaloons are just waiting for the waiting for the right time. <laughs> waiting for the resurgence. Camilla's asking, hey, I, Should, I, I, shouldn't that be a parrot skull? Well, I mean, maybe the parrot has just got a human skull. No, no, oh. no, I agree. I agree. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, I'm going to say that's exactly what a parrot skull looks like. <laughs> I love his expression, how he's looking off. Like, yeah, he's thinking of the word, like he's very, very, yeah, yeah. He's remembering his dear friend. Mm. Yep, Johanna and a bunch of hats too. Yep, they're all just waiting for the right time. <laughs> my skateboard and my skate shoes. <laughs> One day I'll be young again. I saw on the, the internet this morning that Kanye West has just brought out a new line of, I think he's he's doing something with the Gap or something, which is weird because it's kind of like if, it's like the equivalent of Kanye West brought out a new line at Target or something like that. It's yeah. really odd. Um, but he's got, he's, he's reinvented the shoe again and they're, they're just Crocs. They just look like Crocs. Really? I'm just going to call it now. Kanye West has brought out high-end, probably a thousand dollar Crocs. Amazing. Dopey. This is looking like a pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, cast of characters on this boat. <laughs> it's pretty great. I think how, how, how nicely filled out it's, it's it's come together. Do we have a favorite right, chat? Uh, Maybe we could just have a quick look through. Maybe guys, let us know which one is your favorite. Which one's your favorite, yeah. Bill? Um, let me have a look. To be honest, I'm pretty happy with my mouse on the cannonball. I feel mm. like that guy came out really nicely. Mm. Um, really enjoyed doing the skeleton. I <laughs> like the uh, the uh, fish, the, the cod, cod father. father. Yeah, yeah, that was a good one. Um, yeah, it was great suggestions, everyone. Definitely came through again. Yeah, very impressed. 
Chat's been all over it today. I think it's I think it's a really fun, really fun topic. We've got the sky, we've got the boat, we've got we've got the water, lots to play with. Yeah. Yeah. Tim loves yeah. the mouse. Yeah. Festus loves the mouse. SpongeBob. Hippo on a trampoline. Do we have time? We probably have time for one more suggest one more suggestion, a quick one. Hippo on a trampoline? Yeah, sure. I'll see I'll see what I can do. <laughs> um after that, I've, I've extremely little hippo drawing experience, so uh, so this is going to be a very cartoony hippo, I think. Um, the best I know kind. That we've got big, big nostrils, big big front teeth, kind of dorky looking. Uh, they've got that big. Um, I think I'm just drawing hungry, hungry hippos. <laughs> um, Did you know that the hungry, hungry hippos all have names? Really? I heard this on a podcast the other day. Hungry, hungry hippo universe. There is. There's like origin story. No, they um, and they change the names over time, as well. Um, I can't remember any of them. Um, but yeah, they had names. There you go. I'll have to look up some uh, hungry, hungry hippo fan fiction and uh, see what's happening in the broader universe. It's a rabbit hole, like you know. (laughs) Um, Codfather for the win. Cannibal mouse for the win. Um, Johan is very biased for the Viking, of course, as I am, as I am for the duck. Um, yeah. Great suggestions, guys. These are always such fun streams. Johan and I were talking about it uh, yesterday, um, just how much fun these streams are. So thank you, Bill, and thank you, chat. I I really enjoy them as well. Oh, and I got those little little ears that waggle around. (laughs) Get some little wrinkly knees on this guy. <laughs> I'll put a little trampoline here. turned out he's got a nice motion to him uh, yeah I think, uh, the uh, I mean I'm not a physicist but judging by that trajectory I think the uh, the parrot's about to get crushed but um, everything's looking good right now hmm. oh yeah poor parrot it's in a yeah. little trouble <laughs> <laughs> so um so we've got one more of these to do don't we Flynn um, of the uh, interactive drawing sessions yeah, that's right. Yeah, so uh, next week, I think we're on a Friday next week. Mm. Um, but yeah, so we do have one more left. Do you remember which one it is? I'm trying to remember which. <laughs> I think I think we put it down as uh, um, to build a zoo. So we're, we're going oh, to just zoo. be doing all animals. But that's most right. of the animals already. Um, and I feel like this one's kind of like, I mean, it's got a bit of a uh, Noah's Ark quality to it um, mm. in some ways. Um, but yeah, we could do all animals next week or if anyone has any brilliant suggestions, maybe we could we could work on a, a different theme. Um, I think the zoo's gonna be I think zoo's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, zoo should be good. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Lots of lots of potential there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I might just bring up our schedule for this week. We spoke about it just a little bit. Uh, just hey, I'm going to say, uh, uh, Stanley's oh, yeah. just said that I have a deep voice and I should be doing voice acting, and I thought that was important to call out. Thank oh. you very much, Stanley. Good Extremely job. <laughs> Good job, Stanley. Totally Sorry, agree. <laughs> um, well, actually, maybe you could maybe you could tell us about our schedule with your sexy voice. Um, I d- don't know what the schedule is. Oh, okay, you can't Sorry. say it. Okay, fine. Uh, I have it up on screen. <laughs> uh, so obviously right now, here we are. Um, and obviously times may vary uh, due to time zones and stuff, but uh, interactive drawing with Bill Hope um, today. Bill will be back uh, next week, so uh, don't you worry uh, if you enjoyed today. Um, and then uh, very soon uh, at 11 o'clock here in Sydney time, uh, we're doing some motorbike illustration with Dale Bugini. Uh Very exciting, very fun uh, session coming up soon, about an hour from when we go offline uh, now. Uh, tomorrow we've got Bianca Beers coming back, um, which is going to be so much fun, always super fun with Bianca. And then on Friday we have Stephen Grace. Um, so this is more in the graphic design side of things. Stephen Grace works for the fantastic Christopher Doyle & Co. 
um, Design Studio. So um, we'll be mocking up your work. He's a lot of fun. Um, I cannot wait to hang out with him on Friday. Uh, and uh, yeah, he's been on the show once a long time ago, but he might be new to a lot of you folks. And then on Friday, also at 11 o'clock, we've got Patent Illustration with Adriana Picker. She's also with the um, Jackie Winter Group, so lots of illustration this week. Um, and it's going to be a it's going to be a fun week. Um, so the US the US streams I think are paused at the moment. So it's kind of like our parents have gone out and we're just doing whatever we want. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going to have a lot of fun. Um, all the snacks. Yeah, eating all the snacks. Yeah, exactly. We've had a per diem to buy, go to the supermarket, and we've just come back with just nothing but like candies and Mars bars and uh, <laughs> Disney movies. I think, judging from uh, what we were chatting about today. Yeah. Um, but uh, chat, Bill. Thank you so much. These are always some of my favourite streams. They're so much fun, and as always, it's incredible watching you work. Um, and thank uh, you for, yeah, thank you for everything. No worries. Thanks for uh, um, taking care of everything. And thank you so much, everyone in chat. Um, I really appreciate you guys dropping by and hanging out. It's, it's always a lot of fun. So um, have a fantastic week, everyone. Yep, absolutely. And we'll be back in an hour. So hope to see you there. See you yeah, around. tune in for Dale. It's awesome. <laughs> see ya. Okay. See you later, everyone. <laughs>